Hey, this is Isara with UX in Motion. I've got an awesome tutorial for you today. We're going to be creating this cool jelly UI kind of thing. Now, here's our lesson here. And you can see that we're going to be going ahead and creating this, like, you know, sort of like uh, elasticity in our UI using paths in After Effects. It's really cool, really powerful technique. I just want to show you a couple of other cool examples here so you can kind of get your head wrapped around it. Maybe you've seen this before and you're like, dude, thanks for putting this together. I've seen it for uh, pull to refresh uh, like interactions. It's really, really cool. You can do a lot of cool stuff there. And then also just more experimental things as well. I just love this one by Olga Bistrova. She's just got skills. Just clean, very, very clean, very, very cool, fun work from her. And again, if this is the first time you've been animating or you want to animate your UI design files in After Effects, you can head over to uxemotion.net and put in your email here, and I'll send you this free video that I put together. It's super badass. It's 45 minutes long. It's the seven essential steps you need to start animating your UI files in After Effects and creating kick-ass prototypes. Um, this is the, tr the training that I wish I had when I started. It's super, super simple. I've had literally over a thousand UX and UI designers around the world watch this and start animating their stuff with no motion experience. It's designed for people who've never worked on a timeline. So if this is you, go ahead and watch this and get started creating cool stuff. And lastly, I'll say that the design assets I'm using come from UI8.net. They've created this really cool material UI kit that is just fully comprehensive suite of screens, like hundreds of screens in Photoshop and Sketch, and it just saves me so much time when I'm designing, uh, and they're really high quality. So you can click the link below and grab those and get set. All right, so first thing I wanna do is jump over to Photoshop and show you how I set up these files. There's a couple of things that will really make a difference when you're working on your projects. So one of the things to note is that layer styles come across from Photoshop to After Effects, meaning that it's literally a layer style that you can then keyframe and do cool stuff with. So here we have a color uh, like overlay here that we'll be uh, messing around with. So that's just a cool thing. And then also the other thing is that our shape layers in Photoshop actually give us path data in After Effects that we're gonna be using. So that's really cool. And then just as a best practice, I've just flattened down all the UI elements that I'm not going to be animating just for the purposes of this lesson. And also when I'm prototyping for, you know, projects in general, I always create a, like a master layer, layered file and then a prepped file for animation. And I cover that in that video. If you put in your email on the website, blah, blah, blah. Let's get started on making cool stuff. So here's what we're going to be creating. And it's really, really simple animation. Let's go ahead and get started. So I can just command I, and I'm just gonna import my PSD here. This is the this is the one that I've prepped. This is like the full layered one. This is kind of just how I like to work on these projects. Um, bring it in composition, retain layer sizes. Always do that for your UI projects. And we're gonna keep the layer, style, layer styles editable so we can do cool shit with them. Awesome, so I'm gonna go ahead and double click my comp now that I brought in. And let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is just hide this UI layer. So I'm just working on this beast here. Okay, cool. So what we're going to do is we're going to animate this mask path on this layer. And now the way this works is if you just click your, your layer here and you hit M on your keyboard, you can see your mask, your mask right here. And this yellow outline is our mask property. Now, if we pop back over to our animation here, we can see there's actually this curvature that's going on. And if you have experience working with paths, you know that, you know, I can create that with handles here and here, or I can add a point and add handles here and here. And that's what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually add a point to our, like to our abertus, to our mask here, and we're gonna animate that. So the way that works is you can just click over to your pen tool up here in the top corner, hit G. And if you just click on your mask, it's gonna just add a point to this path. And now I can, I have that to work with and that's really cool. And now what I can do is I can actually grab my convert vertex tool here and I can start to smooth it out, right? And play with that. So for now, I'm just gonna drag these handles out here. So it has a nice, cool, you know, curvature shape to play with. Awesome, so we can go ahead and start to actually animate this path here. So if I just click the stopwatch 
uh, little icon here, I can put a keyframe on the path. And we know that this is what where we want our lockup to be, right? Like our end frame. So I'm gonna start the stopwatch here and just set this mask path lockup. And now I'm just gonna scooch this frame over to the right so I can keep that data and keep working with animating this, uh, this mask shape here. So the way this works is now it's just really simple. I can just select anchor points here and I can like, like scooch them back. And what's cool is it's now fully, you know, uh, like animating at, at this point. So now all I have to do is just the basic fundamentals of a uh, like animation, which is just block out the starting and stopping points. So I'm gonna go ahead and scoot this guy over here and go ahead and grab these frames here. And this is just like a little bit of, you know, trial and error. So you just gotta play with these and just kind of get these back to where you want. But the starting position you want is gonna be, you know, where there's nothing there, basically. You've collapsed, collapsed the mask. Or alternatively, you could just scooch the mask path over. If you uh, double click it, you can actually scooch it over as well. You have a bunch of cool options there. And After Effects will just kind of do the math for you like that. So then in the middle frame here, I like to actually have this not be so far back. So I'm gonna maybe put these guys over here and scooch, whoops, and scooch this guy over here. It looks like I missed a point like that. Let's see how, how that kind of treats us. So I can see that when I scooched it out too far, I don't really like that. So I'm gonna actually scooch this back here. Scooch is the technical animation term and I'm gonna just gonna have this be flat so we can see it actually start to kind of bulge out like that and then come out and fill in like this. Okay, cool. So I've kind of just blocked out what I want to have happen here, which is great. Now I'm gonna work on the timing and just kind of getting this where I want. So if I hit plus on my timeline here, I can zoom in on my timeline and if I drag my playback head out and hit end for end, I can close my work area and create a RAM preview and just kind of watch that and that's looking good. And the cool thing about this technique is like you can really have a lot of versatility on your pads and like how you want this to actually feel. And this technique will work great for whatever kind of, you know, jelly thing you happen to be making. Now the next step, once we're happy with kind of these blocked motions here is we're gonna start to ease these and create some, um, design some velocity curves here. So if I control click on my keyframes or go to the graph uh, like editor here and then click the mask path property, it will select the keyframes and then I can go over here to my easing and I can just click that and that will actually ease my velocity curves. Now I, I can go ahead and start to like mess with this a bit and see that it creates a little bit more of a nice fluid kind of feel to it. And that's basically how we accomplish that. And so now all we have to do is take our, um, you know, our layer style down here. So if I twirl this down, we have our layer styles and I have my color overlay here and I can just start to keyframe my opacity. And if, if I hit U on the keyboard, if I select all and hit U, it collapses all the layers and reveals just the properties again if I hit U twice. So I have some real estate to work with here. And so I know that my opacity here is gonna be um, at 50%, but when it starts, it's probably gonna be, say, at, you know, it's gonna be at zero, right? So we're gonna do that. And we can see that it kind of fades in there. And I'm gonna go ahead and use the same data here. So this is 100% influence, and I'm just gonna go ahead and make these eased keyframes as well. So I can just do the same thing here. And if I click the graph, uh, like editor and click my my property, it will select the keyframes and then I can ease those keyframes and then I can just create the same handle on this guy, boom, drag it out. And now the timing is gonna work really, really well there. And then all that remains is to just bring on my UI. And so I know this is where I want my position lockup to be. And again, I'll just hit option P on the keyboard to start my position keyframe. And again, if this is like makes no sense, go ahead and watch that fast start because I cover all this stuff and hit option P again, and I'm just gonna scooch this over to the left, so what, when this comes in, it locks up there, and I can go ahead and ease these, and if I can control click, or click in the graph uh, like editor again, I can select the keyframes, 
easy ease those and then set my keyframe velocity by hitting command shift K and set my incoming velocity here at 100. That's just maximizing it. And now I can see that that comes in and boom, it all times up perfectly. And you can see the way that's accomplished is by having these keyframes all stacked together and then having the same easing on the motion paths, like having that all um, work together is what makes the timing so critical in these UI animations. So I hope you got some value from this. Um, drop me a comment. Let me know if this is working out for you. I think this is such a fun technique because you can do all kinds of cool stuff using masks and shape layers. And check out my other blog posts on this topic because it's a really, really fun place to explore. So I'm Isar. Thanks for watching again. This is uh, UX in Motion.